All right, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today in the lab, we're going to take a look at Gigabyte's EasyTune 6 as it uh, shows up on their uh, Z77X-UD3H. So you see here, when you first open it up, actually what you're going to hit is uh, when you first open up the software, it's actually going to pop you into their Quick Boost. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is that it's not really picking everything up correctly. It doesn't show the CPU speed right. We've got uh, zero gigahertz. It does show what it is. It shows the B clock and all of that. But each of the individual uh, quick boosts, they don't actually show what you're going to get. This is probably because the software is a little bit out of date. Maybe it's not reading the CPU right through the BIOS. For whatever reason, it's just not picking anything up right. When we did click on these during our testing, we didn't get any kind of a result. We used, ended up using the auto-tuning which gave us a modest overclock. We got about 4.5 gigahertz, uh, one point, uh, or 102 megahertz B clock, and then uh, you know just a very small multiplier to get us up to that 4.5 gigahertz. Uh, unfortunately, the overclock was unstable as well. We didn't get the same stability. We had blue screens during the auto tuning, and whenever we rebooted, it wanted to go back into the auto tuning and find that stability. We actually had to stop it and then it get it going. We ran it a couple of times to see if it was a particular issue. We did some tweaking in the BIOS and still hit that same wall. It wanted to blue screen once it hit the 4.5 gigahertz range. And we had to manually stop the, uh, the auto tuning here. So this feature, although it does work to a certain degree, uh, we ran into issues with it when we used it with our 3770K. All right, moving on back to the beginning of EasyTune. We've talked about this before in text and we're just going to show this to you here. You do have a CPU Z functionality. You, you click on CPU, it's going to show you all the CPU information, what it is. Right now we're at our 4.7 gigahertz overclock. This was our highest stable overclock with this board, which isn't bad. Uh, it's 100 megahertz slower than what we've gotten with most of the other boards, but at 4.8 gigahertz we just were not able to get stability with this board. We also saw significantly higher temperatures than what we were used to with this board at the same voltages. Uh, even idle, we were seeing very high uh, CPU temperatures, which began to concern us. So we went ahead and kicked it back to 4.7 gigahertz, lowered the voltage, and we found stability here at 1.35 volts at 4.7. Still got good performance, as you can see when you click on the link below this video and hit our uh, the actual review link, which has all of our graphs and everything in there. Moving on to the next screen, you have, of course, the memory. Talked about this before as well. It's pretty much the same functionality we get from CPU Z. It's going to show you all of your memory multipliers, what you get, your uh, your different uh, timings, and the frequencies that it's running at, as well as the different uh, voltages that you're going to see. These are the timings tables that are built into the RAM that are actually going to run at these when you set them at different frequencies. All right, we've talked about the tuner and the quick boost, so now we're going to take a look at the easy settings here. Again. For whatever reason, the, uh, the software is just not picking everything up correctly. Of course, on easy, the only thing you can adjust is the frequency. Your ratio and your voltages are not there yet. You go to advanced. Um, you're going to have other options. You can see here, if we go to advanced, we have uh, frequency and we have options for voltages. Again, we're, this is what we're seeing with this particular installation. Uh, it doesn't look like EasyTune is actually just picking things up the way it's supposed to. Our graphics, um, we don't have a graphics card put in here, so that particular tab is not available. If we had our uh, 5870 in here, this would be an option where we could overclock the graphics card directly through this utility. All right, moving on to our smart system, you have your CPU fans. We can adjust this, um, set the uh, fan PWN percentage, the RPMs, the temperature to adjust it to, all of that. And then you can also take a look at the system fan. So it has options for two of the fan headers to control them directly inside this uh, application, which is fairly nice. Uh, of course, we've seen extended functionality coming up on other boards where they add additional fan headers that can be controlled from inside Windows. Um, most of the other fan headers can be controlled in the 3D BIOS, which we'll talk about as well. Again, click on the link below. You'll, you'll see where that video is plugged into the BIOS section. All right, taking a look at the final page, this is the hardware monitor. You can take a look at uh, the voltages right here. It's, gonna, it's going to it's supposed to give you a reading of the voltages. Unfortunately, right now, it's just not uh, showing that the same way it should. Uh, the, the readout should actually be here instead of just through the graph. And then, of course, you have your different fans and temperature settings. You can actually set these. It'll show you what it's going on right now, as well as being able to adjust these sliders to, uh, to what your nominal ranges are. You can set up different alerts, audio, buzzers, all of that. So it's going to pop up and give you a buzzer if it exceeds that threshold. 
All right, so that covers everything that we've got inside the Easy Tune 6 on this board, which is the Z77X-UD3H. Again, we do we are running into some issues with the software. It's not picking up everything properly with the IV Bridge processor. We have updated the BIOS as well as uh, attempted to download a newer version of the software, and this is still what we're running into where it's just not pulling all the information the way we would expect it um, on this board with an IV Bridge CPU. Uh, one of the other pieces of software that we want to show you today with uh, on the Gigabyte uh, Z77X UD3H is their 3D Power software. This is their Windows tool that allows you to adjust the 3D Power systems that are in the BIOS, but directly through Windows. Um, as you can see here, this is the entry screen for the 3D Power software. Uh, you have the bouncing cube with the different uh, features here. As soon as you uh, mouse over it, it's going to stop bouncing. Um, which is nice, so we'll just keep the mouse there. Uh, you have the different options at the top. You have your voltage, you have your phases here, and then you have your frequency. When you click on any one of these, it's going to rotate the box, and then it's going to give you those power options here. So you can actually click on something, turbo voltage response. You can change it from fast to standard, load, load line calibration. You have a nice slider. Uh, you can look at it through for VTT, for the graphics, for your DDR, all of that. You have your overclocking protection. This is going to give you your range in millivolts for both the CPU and for your DDR. And then when you want to go back to the main screen, you just go ahead and click on the, the box again. And then you click on the individual piece that you want. Now, when we first took a look at this software, it was exceptionally slow. Uh, the graphics were slow. The movements back and forth through here. So this is actually a very nice improvement over what we originally saw with this software. Again, you can look at the different frequencies. You have your PWM frequency for the CPU, for VTT, for your graphics, for DDR, all of that. Now, what's nice about it here is we don't have, uh, we only have two RAM slots populated, so it's not going to let us mess around with those other two RAM slots. There's no reason to, so it's just going to have them blocked out because there's nothing there. As you can see, you have a nice slider. It's going to give you your range of frequencies that you can go ahead and adjust it. Um, on the CPU, there's nothing to adjust, so and again we're seeing the same thing with this which is interesting you should be able to go ahead and move this back and forth but right now it's just set at 250 kilohertz so we'll go back and we'll take a look at the phases again you have your you know animation so you have your different phase control you can sit here uh, you know we have it on the extremely high performance which is nice you can uh, adjust it through these that are going to give you different levels of power performance through here as far as the adjustability of the phases if you have it uh, set to balance, it's going to dynamically adjust those phases to give you the most power that you need during uh, you know, the appropriate CPU cycles. Limited CPU cycles, it's going to reduce those down, all of that. So it's a nice one. You have your overcurrent protection for your different modules that are in here. And then of course your thermal protection. So that covers the 3D power. Again, this is part of the software functionality that uh, Gigabyte brings to their motherboards and we'll be combining this in um, you know, with the rest of our review. Again, you click on the link below, you'll be able to see that full review, which also has our video for the 3D BIOS and some of the other software. We showed you the EasyTune 6, so we have all of that bundled together now. It's, you know, part of what we're extending is with our reviews. As always, if you like this video, go ahead and click on the like button. Be sure to share it with your friends, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.